Okay, let's go over these practice problems for chapter 7 test, uh, first part of chapter 7, two-dimensional forces. Um, you master the problems in this uh, review, and you should be able to master the test. How do I know I mastered the problem? Cover it up like that, solve the problem, check your answer, see if you did it right. That's how you know for sure that you can independently do any problem. Okay, this first problem is an equilibrant problem. We have uh, a man and his dog fighting over his sled, and I need to know, okay, what sort of third force am I going to apply to cancel these two out? Well, the way I do that is I take these two forces, add them up. How do I do that? The component method. There's the resultant components, okay? Put that in vector format, and it's got a magnitude of 5.25 newtons at 60.9 degrees. How am I going to cancel that out? Well, my third force has to be same magnitude, opposite direction. Okay, lots of problems like this. We should be pretty proficient at these at now. All right, your first move is you're always going to be in equilibrium perpendicular to the plane, and we can solve for force normal. This vector and this vector are going to be equal. Once I have force normal, I can get force friction. Uh, when I do my calculations here, you notice that this vector is going to be less than this vector. Therefore, it's going to accelerate in the direction of a longer, uh, larger vector. Therefore, it's going to accelerate down the incline and I can solve for acceleration. Why is this negative? Because I called this direction positive. Uh, be better to call this direction positive. Why? Because that's probably the way it's going to move. Okay. Yet another sliding block problem. What's different about this one? I need you to recognize just starts to slide. Okay, so this is going to be an equilibrium problem. Uh, as long as this vector, I mean this angle remains 32 or less, this vector and this vector are going to be equal. So I'm back calculating this. I got my force normal, knowing here and here I'm in equilibrium. Then I get mu sub k. Actually, that's not right. That is mu sub s, as it has not started to slide. Ha, ah, this is absolutely no different. Um, this vector is smaller than this vector, okay? Therefore, it's going with, unless there's another outside force applied acting on it, it's going to slide this way. Again, back in the old days, I called this positive. It's much better to call this positive because it's going down an incline. Call the direction of motion positive, and then that way you won't get these little squirrely things. All right, now this one I'm going to yammer about a little bit more because there's something I need you to do on this test and pay attention. If you're paying attention to this review, good for you. You're going to have a little tidbit above your colleagues here. Okay, in this situation, it's very important for you to take a look at your parallel component of your weight and your force of friction. And if you notice here, this number is smaller than this number which means left to its own device here, this will not slide down the incline. This force of friction is too large. So in order for this thing to slide, I'm either going to have to push it up or push it down the incline. I do not have enough angle here to overcome this force of friction. And this does say I am pulling it up, but I need you to check on that on each problem. I need you to take a look at these two vectors and it's going to tell you, um, you know, is it moving or not? Okay, in this case, it does say that I'm pulling up. So then that means that this vector and this vector are going to add. Very important to find out which way it's going to move, if at all, so I know the direction of that force of friction. You're going to have a problem on the test where well, you're going to have to figure that out and um, fi figure out if, this is big enough to overcome this to see if it is indeed moving down the incline or up the incline. All right, and then after that, we got constant velocity. 
with this applied force. So uh, this vector has to be equal to the addition of two vectors is what this statement says here. And therefore, I can solve for the force applied. And then they said, okay, well, what about now instead of constant velocity, accelerate this same statement except instead of being equal to zero, it's equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, another symmetrical sign hanging problem. Okay, this is going to be starting to get old hat too. As long as it's symmetrical, I can always say this, symmetrical only. All right, now you got to be careful. Okay, I have a breaking strain of 30 newton, sine weighs 36. A lot of students, oh yeah, of course it'll hold. Uh, or no, it will break, all right, because this is bigger than this. But remember... I'm holding it at an angle, all right? So what is the breaking strain um, if this 30 newtons is not holding it straight up but holding it at an angle, all right? So this is a, um, this is a comparison value. So let's find out how much actual tension is in the cable, 25.5. It's less than 30 newtons, so this is not going to break, even though that this number is less than this number. Be careful of that, hint, hint. All right, let's uh, continue this on uh, part two.